denominator is that my color choices for my slides set. So, so. <laughs> Just another tool in the toolbox. Fire is also just another tool. It may not be the right tool. There, there's limited situations when it is beneficial and when it's not. But it can be a very cost effective tool for manipulating vegetation. It's just like with the herbicide application, timing is very critical. Uh, Am I tr I'm trying to select for certain plants and negatively impact others. And so I need to try to apply that fire when I can have that effect. So what is the growth stage of the plant that I'm trying to benefit? Um, winter dormant plants are typically harmed less than a drought stressed plant. Um, soil moisture, a lot of different factors. So selective uh, suppression or promotion of particular plant species depends primarily on the date uh, that the fire in relation to the phenology of the species. So just like with a chemical, if that plant is actively growing, I'm probably going to be able to have more of a negative impact on it, depending on where the bud zone, the growth zone is of that plant. So if I'm trying to favor native grasses, but try to suppress uh, woody plants growing in there, if I can burn that when I can uh, uh, kill that, that woody species and not harm my grass, that's going to be the best. So usually those species are actively growing when the area is, is burned or much more susceptible to injury. So with a herbicide, I'm trying to put that on when the plant's actively going so it can take that herbicide down to the roots. If I'm going to try to negatively impact, let's say, a woody species, I want to try to burn it when it's the most susceptible, when it's expelled most of the carbohydrates from its roots so it doesn't have enough energy to recuperate. Uh, so if I'm trying to get rid of a woody species and I'm going to have to maybe burn it two or three years in a row to have a big enough impact, right as that stuff is starting to green out in the spring, if I've got enough other fine fuel to run a fire through there, I'm hitting it when it's at its low, and if I can do that over a period of time, I can have a much better impact. Otherwise, if I'm just burning a re-sprouting plant, it's just going to keep re-sprout. All I'm going to do is get a top kill on it. So if I can hit it when it's uh, susceptible or it has uh, a decreased ability to recover from that fire, I can have a bigger impact on it. So we talked a lot about timing. What do I have time, money, resources? So I could get into very specifics of when exactly would be the best time to apply that fire, but like most tools, I'm going to apply them when I have the ability to do it. So either I've got uh, the manpower, the weather parameters, and enough uh, dried fuel out there that I can carry a fire and hope for the best. So here's a little blue stem predominant field and it's been maintained with fire. The, the brush tries to encroach the edges and so uh, try to burn that every couple of years to set back the woody species on that. Now depending on the soil moisture um, is, is how much more impact I'm going to have and so typically I'm just burning that in a, uh, a winter burn so any time between December and February. Uh, but the results have been greatly different depending on the soil moisture. And so even if I'm burning at the same time of year, maybe with the same kind of temperature parameters, pretty close relative humidity and things of that nature, uh, one other big factor would be would the amount of soil moisture. So there it is, uh, burning up some of the trees in there, trying to keep those out. So this was a, uh, I believe 2011, it was pretty dry, uh, the, the driest soil conditions I'd had for a fire through this particular pasture, and uh, had a harder impact. It, it hurt the grass and set it back a little bit. Even with that hot of a fire with very tall flame lengths, there's seed still laying on the ground surface that didn't get consumed. Now I couldn't tell you whether that got heated too much where it's not viable, but at least it was still physically present. So we've had the fortune to be able to come help with the, uh, the Master Naturalist group here in the Seaborn Creek Park. This was the first burn that we helped them with in February of 2011. 
How many people were here that day? Quite a few. Yep. So you don't have to wear all the, the cool looking yellow clothes and hard hat and <laughs> just wear non flammable clothes. It's certainly tools that can make it uh, more more beneficial that the drip torch there is a pretty dang handy tool. So that was the first year and then uh, because of one of y'all's active members takes very good photographs I was able to get with uh, Mr. Poorman and get a hold of some photographs so this was only 12 days after that burn that we did in 2011. So we lay, waited till pretty late in the spring, right before that grass is about to green up. And so by burning it that late, we're certainly benefiting the grass itself. Any other forbs, which, which may be beneficial, but if we're trying to promote the grass, I can knock those back because they're in a stage that they're very susceptible to the fire. The bud zone of that grass is so low, even if it's a half inch to two inches of green in that grass and I run a fire through it, I'm not going to negatively harm it. I'm going to set back anything else that's in there and give the benefit to that grass. So I'm removing the thatch that's covering uh, the soil. I can heat up the soil more quickly. That activates the uh, bacteria in that soil which breaks down the components and gives basically a fertilization effect to that grass as it's starting to uh, come out. And so that's how fire is positively affect affecting those native grasses. So there's the part right next to it that was shredded and not burned. And so there's 19 days. It's amazing, and you can burn in the summer when this stuff is, is green, and and literally come out two days later, and you've already got another inch of inch of green that's come back up out of the black. It is a very good tool. Native grass responds very well to it. Uh, here at the park again, a different section of the grass. We burned it uh, maybe two days later than we did uh, in 2011 wind burning out of a different direction, so started at the other end. And we'll talk about kind of the methodology a little bit as we work our way through this. Nice clean fire breaks make uh, burning less stressful. So, and there's again some hands-on experience for, for the volunteers, uh, all the master naturalists that have worked so hard to put this together. to John. That's the, the reason I have all these pictures was because of his good work. And a nice smoke plume at the end. That's kind of victory. Well, again, we slicked all that off. So I'm trying to remove uh, any thick thatch that's, that's there. Suppress any woody species that may be coming in that, that are not desirable. And uh, benefiting those native grasses. I was unaware when we got here last year that the fire chief was uh, not in favor of us conducting that burn. I walked up and, man, thanks for being here. It's great having y'all here. I didn't know that he was very much against it and uh, he was concerned about the smoke. Uh, we were burning with a different smoke direction. He thought we were going to put smoke over a road a mile or two to the south and as you saw in that previous picture, the smoke column went straight up. It was textbook, went perfect and uh, so I was looking through these pictures and I'm going to call that a smile on his face. I don't know for sure if it was, <laughs> but uh, but I, I believe they were they were pleased that uh, the way it went. I think they just did not have experience with prescribed burning, and uh, like most people, they had a natural fear of of the fire and uh, us not being able to control it. But with with prior planning and, and some knowledge, uh, fire is a, a very manageable tool. Species diversity, of course, is always important. So burning under the right conditions is important, uh, not only for achieving, achieving my objectives, but uh, first for safety, and then what objectives am I going to meet with that? 
factors that can uh, influence your, the intensity of the fire. How much fuel I've got. How continuous is it? How hot or cold is it while I'm conducting that fire? What's my relative humidity? That's going to affect the amount of moisture that's in my fuel that the fire is going to have to heat up and, and burn off before it can combust. Um, again, that can relate also to my soil moisture. How much wind I've got and uh, my lighting pattern. Am I burning against the, the, the wind pushing my flame preheating or with a head fire with that pushing in front of it? Native pastures would typically burn them in the fall or early winter to, to benefit those grasses, to control woody, woody growth and remove the summer grasses. Allows winter forbs and grass to make an early start. So if I'm trying to increase diversity and I want more forbs in there, I'd like to burn as early as I can in the fall because those forbs are, are coming up early and putting in the rosette stage. They don't put on a whole lot above ground, but they're establishing their roots. And then they'll wait till spring to bolt. Well, if I burn everything off as early as I can in the fall, then I've heated up that soil surface. It allows the uh, rain to soak in and gives them a big head start uh, to compete with your grasses later in the spring. If I'm, again, I'm trying to suppress any forbs and just benefit my grasses, I'm going to burn as late as I can right when that grass is starting to green up in the spring. And so just that simple impact. There's a lot of other factors involved. It can be quite complicated, but that's the simple textbook method. Now again, soil moisture, the amount of rain that I get afterwards uh, plays a huge role. If I burn that off and I don't get rain, then, then I'm leaving bare ground and other things may come in. And so it's a calculated risk. Upland woods, uh, typically try to burn them um, December through January to help restore browse back within uh, the reach of deer and maybe open up the, uh, the canopy a little bit. So most of our trees are going to be re-sprouters like Yopon and things.